Hey guys, it's Sandra here with a video today on this Toyota MR2 that for those of you who saw my last video on the detailing classes that I teach, you would have seen this car being used for a few of those training classes. So as promised, this video is a follow-up on this classic Japanese mid-engine car being restored for the owner who just purchased it a few months ago. Now as you'll see, once we have a closer look at the body and paint, it was actually quite a challenging car to work on due to the intricacy of the panels, but even more so due to the existing level of paint and the repainted panels that, let's just say, weren't repaired to a great level of quality. So in other words, it was a job that required a lot of finesse and a delicate touch, with quite a lot of restrictions and limitations due to the existing paint. But that's also what made it such a great car to use in the detailing training classes as there was just so much that could be learnt from working on a car that presents so many challenges. Now during the wash and decontamination stages, this MR2 received quite an in-depth intense treatment where all the badly soiled and contaminated surfaces, from the paint to the trims, glass and plastics, were deep cleaned and stripped in preparation for the paint correction stage. The wheels were removed, washed and chemically treated as well as mechanically clayed, including the inner wheel wells and arches. The engine bay also received a much needed decontamination and all the door jams were also given quite a thorough clean. After looking at the floor of the wash bay, once we were all done, which was more black than concrete in colour, I think we removed a good 10 kilos of dirt and grime, returning this little roadster back to its original lightweight design. The car was then blown dry with warm compressed air, ensuring all the trapped water around the panel edges and gaps was removed and a final IPA alcohol-based wipe down of the entire vehicle was performed to ensure any remaining residue from the wash and decontamination stages was removed. Once the car was moved back into the paint correction bay, it became even more evident that this was going to be quite a challenge, with the various different existing paints from the original factory paint to the several different custom and resprayed panels, mixed in with heavy oxidation and a uniform layer of swirls and many deeper and more severe scratches and defects. After inspecting and measuring the paint, there were readings well below 50 microns on the remaining original factory single stage paint, which you can actually easily distinguish by its pinkish colour due to its heavier oxidation. But just as limiting were the resprayed panels that had clear coat that was beginning to fail in many areas. And I could see the original paint underneath and in some cases I could see resprayed paint over older resprayed paint meaning that these panels contained up to three different stages of paints. 
So even though the overall thickness rating was good, it was also deceptive, as only a third of that paint in many areas was the actual top layer, and only a portion of that was actual clear coat. So in other words, after understanding what these paint thickness readings actually meant on both the original and repainted panels, it basically meant that there was very little remaining paint to work with. So in order to restore the paint, yet avoid burning through it or removing too much, a delicate balance was going to be needed. After seeing that many of the defects were quite extreme, it just wasn't going to be possible to remove them all but the aim would still be to achieve a great improvement in the finish, mainly by removing the oxidation and also many of the lighter to moderate defects, while the heavier defects would also be reduced in their severity and appearance but not entirely removed. As much as I'd like to be able to increase the paint's thickness and rectify cheaper and lower quality aftermarket paint jobs, detailers are limited to the thickness and quality of the paint we have to work on. I'll let you guys judge the finish with the final shots in the end, but I can tell you that the owner was blown away with the results, and if you judge the car in the state of how it was to begin with, with all the limitations we had to work with, and how it came up in the end, it really was an amazing transformation. Now during the advanced paint correction class that this car was used in, Approximately the top half of the car was completed by the students and during the next day and a half or so I finished correcting the lower half panels of the car myself. As mentioned a heavier cutting stage would have been far more effective at removing many of the more severe defects if there was enough paint to work with. But after some combination testing with quite a few different pads and compounds we all agreed as a class that the yellow Shymate pad with Concourse Precision Compound seemed to produce the best overall results as a light cutting stage, followed by the orange Shime pad with finesse polish for the second stage, just to clean up some minor haze and maximize gloss and clarity in the finish. You'll also see that apart from the bonnet, the only pads I used were three inch pads or smaller with my mini and nano polishes. On a car such as this, there really aren't many large flat panels at all, where you'd use five or six inch pads. Now, you still obviously could, but you'll find that the level of correction you achieve with the larger pads on a car like this will be largely reduced. And even more so important is that those larger pads on a super thin paint like this have a much greater chance of burning an edge. So not only will a mini polisher allow you to achieve greater results on an intricate car like this, but it'll also be far safer on thinner paint, making it a win-win situation. I think the hardest part for me in relation to correcting this paint was knowing when to stop and just accept that those more severe defects wouldn't be safe to remove, as there is definitely a part of me that wanted to go a little further, but the more experienced me knew that it's better to preserve the remaining paint and just live with some of those imperfections. In relation to technique, I mostly use slower machine speeds with very light pressure and during the first light cutting stage, I limited myself to a maximum of two sets of passes in any one section. I know that I'm always my hardest critic, even if I don't always admit it. Well, maybe apart from a few trolls and haters on YouTube that don't really count. I think that's always what makes me want to strive for more and never accept or be entirely happy with any work I produce. At the end of the day, all I'm really doing is washing, polishing and protecting a car but it's never really been about what I do, as much as it's been about how I go about it, which tends to be all or nothing in most cases that follows through to many aspects of my life.
Once the correction was completed, the car was given another alcohol-based wipe down with clarity and moved into the coding room. The coding of choice for the MR2 was Nova Evo, which once again was applied by the students who took part in the coding and advanced paint correction class. After allowing the class to apply the coding and get a feel for it on a few certain test panels, they then proceeded to coat the whole car while I tried my best to answer any questions or solve any issues along the way. But overall, they did an absolutely fantastic job. The car's glass was then coated with Nova Glass and the rims were coated with pyro wheel coating, ensuring that the car was protected from top to bottom. I'll leave you with the final shots of this awesome little car, with a special thanks going out to all the students that helped restore it in a respectful, caring and professional manner. I've actually always loved the original Toyota MR2s, and I've always wanted one, as they just seem to make me smile so much every time I get to work on one. So maybe when the timing's right, I'll finally get one on my own. As always, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like, comment and subscribe to this channel to show support for these videos and I'll see you guys soon.